Okay, good evening. Before we start new stuff, I have a couple of comments about the homework and related things. Um, the, f the first and the most important comment is that um, taking the homework seriously is important to do well in this course. Um, and it actually, part of it's just reading the questions carefully and thinking about them, and then getting, making sure that you understand things you have trouble with, making sure you can do them, do them on your own if you had to get help with them. Um, you may have noticed a practice another version of this problem button that appears after an assignment is due. What that'll do is it'll give you uh, the same problem with a different set of random numbers or a different diagram or something like that. So you can, things you had trouble with, you can make sure you know how to do now by practicing another, another one. Um, if, you're, if you're having a little trouble remembering homework, note there's a calendar accessible to you in WebAssign that shows all your due dates and assignments, and I think it'll even send you reminders, so you can do that. Notice also that on many of these questions, when, when there's a question that involves a lot of sequential calculations, it's possible to submit one answer box at a time. And that's good because it lets you make sure you've got the first part right if the second part is based on what you did on the first part. So if you leave an answer box blank and then click submit, it'll only resubmit the things you've entered. So, so you have a chance, it, especially in these problems where calculations build on each other, you, you need to get the first part right before you go on. So make sure you can do that. If you miss a homework assignment, you need to do it anyway. The homework really, this is really where you practice thinking about the material. Some of you have already noticed that there are, it's possible to get an automatic extension if you ask within 48 hours of the due date. And what that'll do is let you, give you another 24 hours to finish an assignment and you'll get 50, per, there's a, you'll get 50 percent of the points you earn after the deadline. It's not wonderful for points, but it's better than nothing. But the most important thing is doing it. You need to do it, um, and you need to take it seriously. Most people who pass this course have a minimum of about 75% on the homework, and, and more is, is definitely advisable. And, and it's best if you don't treat it as, I'm just trying to get points. It's best if you treat it as, I really want to understand what I'm doing on this problem. Uh, remember that there are homework help sessions from 5 to 7 in Riddick 319, and you can always use the Ask Your Instructor feature in WebAssign, come talk to me. So there's, there's a variety of help. Um, it's also a good idea to use the book, and some of you have noticed some things that exist in the book. For example, here is a table in Chapter 1. So what is this a table of? Well, it's a table of the value of gamma uh, for particles with different speeds. We calculated a few in class. You've calculated a few. But pretty often during the semester, you're going to have to make a decision. When is it OK to approximate gamma as 1, and when do I really actually have to calculate it? Well, this actually helps you think about what to do because if the speed, of, if something's at rest, clearly gamma is indeed exactly one. But note that if it's moving three meters per second to four decimal places, it's still one. And if it's moving 300 meters per second, it's still one to four decimal places. And if it's moving three million meters per second, we've now got a one in the fourth decimal place. So for all practical purposes, it's still approximately one. And how far do we have to go before it really starts changing? We need to get up to about half the speed of light before we get gamma as 1.15. Now, you may want to do some of these calculations for yourself, but it's a useful thing to note that that exists in the textbook. Second, there are inline exercises, these purple things. Some of them you'll recognize because some of them exact exist in slightly different versions on WebAssign. But the nice thing about these inline exercises is that they have answers at the end of the chapter. So that if you go to the end of the chapter, it says answers to exercises. 
And so you can actually practice some things and check your work before going to WebAssign. You can actually save yourselves a fair amount of time by reading the textbook carefully, doing some of the inline exercises, making sure you understand it before you start the homework instead of sort of thrashing trying things on homework. Second, one piece of advice on homework. It often happens that a student has thought about a problem, decided they know a sensible way to calculate the answer, do the calculation, type it into WebAssign, WebAssign says no. At that point, people often go, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I'll just try something else, and you start trying various things. That's not the right thing to do. If you've thought about the problem and you think you know how to solve it, chances are you actually made a calculation error. That is the most likely thing. It may be not having your, having your calculator in radians instead of degrees. It may be forgetting parentheses. It may be mistyping a number. Okay, these things actually really do happen. This is more common than you think. So don't assume that you don't know what you're doing just because you didn't get the right number. Actually, really try the calculation again. Writing down your work is essential for debugging, so make sure you do that. Uh, you've also noticed, I think, from the last homework that we're not going to do absolutely everything in lecture. What we do in lecture is cover the high points, point you to things you need to know. You're not going to leave here knowing everything you need to know. You're going to leave the lecture knowing what you need to study and what you need to, to make sure you know. So for example, we did not actually calculate delta p's in lecture, but we knew how to subtract vectors, and we knew how to calculate momentum as a vector, and so you need to take that step and make that application. There is a small list of things you're going to have to memorize, and these are the first installments in it. You're going to need to know these. Um, and again, you need to know them because we can't really have conversations without this. And by the end of the, the lecture, we'll have added one more. <laughs>